Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on Electronics 101 we're going to be going over the concept of the MOSFET. MOSFET is a certain kind of transistor, if you remember last time we talked about the BJT, the Bipolar Junction Transistor. Now we're going to be talking about FETs, MOSFETs in particular. So what does MOSFET stand for? It actually stands for Metal Oxide Semiconducting Field Effect Transistor. It's the field effect transistor that makes this a FET. So here are the two symbols. So like uh, tr the BJTs, there are two kinds. Here is the N channel. It's not called an PNP or an NPN. It's an N channel and a P channel. And they look like this. If so I can draw this properly. Green and source. Gate, little dot. There we go. Source and drain. Okay. So that, those are the two symbols. So, these are different than BJTs in a couple of ways. One of the biggest one is that these are actually voltage controlled devices as opposed to the BJTs current controlled. So if you remember the BJT, you have to put current on the base for MOSFETs they're called gates in order to control current through this. Now in the BJTs they were called commit, um, collectors and emitters. Here they're drain and source. So got a couple different names for things. One another difference is that these things can control higher amounts of current. They're also more stable and by that I mean they're less likely to leak current and they have a quicker reaction time. There's actually a, an event in BJTs where they can store a tiny amount of current for a tiny amount of time because it takes time for the current to flow. So let's talk more about the MOSFET. Now the same rules as BJTs apply for MOSFET. It's just that things are very different. They're not very different. They're just a little different. So uh, I'd said that they're... Well, I'll talk more about that in a second. Now, because they are voltage controlled, and it's not using silicons, it's using oxides, it makes calculating current through these devices pretty tricky. And if you go onto the Wikipedia page, you'll probably find this formula. The current through the drain is mu n c o x w over l times the quantity of v g s minus v t h multiply that by v d s minus v squared over oh, v d s squared over l oh two not two not l two. So, what does this mean? The current through the drain is equivalent to mu n, that's the uniform charge distribution, C is the capacitance for the device, I think. W and L are the width and length of the channel created by f turning the device on. So, it's all really weird, really specific chemistry stuff that you'd have to know about the device. So. Another difference between the um, BGTs and the MOSFETs is this idea of VTH. That's the threshold voltage. The threshold voltage actually makes this operate a little more like a diode than a BJT would. For an N channel, current flows through to the device if the voltage you put on the gate is actually referenced like this. The voltage from gate to source is greater than the voltage threshold. Then current flows. For the P channel, that's NOR, not FOR, 
for the P channel. If the voltage this time from drain to source minus the voltage from gate to source is greater than the voltage threshold current flows. So it's like the BJTs in that put enough voltage you get current current flows here less voltage current flows. Now the cool thing is that this even works for negative voltages if you put a negative voltage on the gate. So that makes these really useful in say like amplifiers. Now let's go through a basic circuit. Now because they're really similar to BJTs and the same tra and the same transistor rules apply, they can be thought of as almost exactly the same. The only difference you've got to take in is that it's voltage triggered, not current triggered. So it can be thought of as almost high impedance. So they're not as trouble f troublesome for microcontrollers like the Arduino, where you've got to be concerned about how much power it uh, how much current it can actually supply, calculating proper resistance value to get the right current flow. So let's take this, let's take an N channel and use it as a switch. So let's see, we got a f power supply and we're going to tie that through a switch to a MOSFET. And in that we're going to have an LED. It's an LED and we'll put a resistor down here. And then we've got to put a resistor down here as well. And then we tie that all back together. Oh, got to tie that. Okay. So when I flip this switch, voltage comes down here activates the MOSFET and lets the LED glow. Pretty simple. This resistor here prevents a short because throwing the switch immediately connects it to ground so this prevents that short and it also creates a voltage choke so that some voltage leaks through onto the gate. So pretty simple and you, you can assume that let's say this is a 5 volt supply and the voltage threshold for the MOSFET is 1.5 volts that's pretty standard so again because the gate pin is voltage triggered there's no current required so again it's that high impedance it's not going to use much power you're not going to actually use any power to turn the MOSFET on you're just going to need it to power the LED so that's one really great, that's just a great thing about MOSFETs. Now, let's talk about the P channel. And let's use that as, say, a current block. That's not a C. Current block. So let's say you've got a 5 volt power supply, 5 volts and then you're going to tie that into a p-channel MOSFET and you're going to tie this to a resistor and then a capacitor and then this will just flow to ground and then I'm going to try and connect that but that's a terrible line let's try that again put a little dot there we go there we go so now when the charge of the capacitor, let's say the voltage through the cap, is equal to voltage from drain to source minus VTH, it stops. So this can be used to regulate current flow through a capacitor. It's really the only example I could think of where this would be useful, but I know that there are others. This is just the only one I could think of when I was writing out my notes. So that's really it when it comes to MOSFETs. Uh, let's just go over the example, the difference between BJTs and that. They're voltage controlled, so that's high 
impedance don't have enough room to write that high impedance you can control much more current through it without fear of it melting I know that some, a lot of BJT's have that max current flow these uh, for MOSFETs they're a lot higher they're much more stable less prone to leaking and they have a quicker reaction time between turning it on and turning it off so that's it for MOSFETs they're really great devices if you're looking for something a little different than your BJT so this has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.